So, you know, we've had somebody who has been fighting the tech issues that we've been having on the back end this entire time. Robin from last week has called in, has dropped, called in again, dropped, called in again. I think that that's the, the number of times. The fact that they have been persistent in trying to communicate, I, we're so excited about it. Uh, Robin in D.C. Welcome back, Robin. Yeah. How are you doing today? Good. How are you guys doing? Am I am I coming in well? By the way, you are. You are I'm gonna bump your volume up just smooth. a little bit, but that is a good microphone you got there. Yeah. What did you want to talk about? Thank you. Well, um, I know last week there were some questions you had about my position, but I'd also like to ask um, some more follow up questions about what what you guys have as your worldview um, sure. as it pertains to this matter. Okay. So, um, Whatever you want to do first. All right, we, we may be able to just knock the the question that we had for you out of the way if you wanted to answer it and you, we can move forward. Yeah. Uh, just honestly, right now I'm having just a second. Um, so I, I'm having I'm having a moment of 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 cloudiness. I believe last week when you called in, we ended with you us talking about um, revelation as a way of coming to understand true revelatory things. epistemology there we go yes thank you v and we asked you how we can determine whether or not something is 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 a revelation from god or somebody talking to themselves or you know how can how we can determine you know your revelation and v's revelation um both of them don't agree with each other so how do you determine which one is correct and which one isn't was that the question that we had for you? Because I'm pretty sure that was at least close to the mark. <clears throat> yeah, it was essentially it was it was on that same. Um, it was essentially that um, that that whole idea. Okay. So yes. Um, now I know this is going to sound circular to you, and mm. I will actually concede to you that it is. Okay? okay. But the the way you know which revelation is true and which revelation is false is on the basis of God's revelation itself. Okay. okay. Now, in my worldview, okay, truth is that which concords or which corresponds to the mind of God. Okay. So truth is ultimately going to be dictated by how God has organized the world um, and how God has organized the, the universe around it. Okay. Okay. Um, can I ask now, you a question? Ultimately, right? everyone's. Or actually, sorry, yeah. I'm going to put a pin in it because I want you to finish your statement. Um, I, I just, the, the, the correlating truth to the mind of God, I really want to dive into. Um, but please go ahead and finish your statement. Yeah, just very quickly. Yeah. Um, ultimately, everyone's, everyone's uh, like epistemology is going to be uh, going on one of the three horns of the Munchausen tri trilemma, which is either circularity, axiomatic truth, or um, an infinite regress. So I'm going to be on the horn of circularity, meaning that God's revelation is ultimately going to be the basis of my knowledge. And because God cannot, um, you know, and the Bible says God cannot swear by anyone higher than himself, so he swore by himself, right? So he, he his, rev his revelation is self-attesting. So it's going to be circular in that regard. Okay. Um, that actually gives us a lot of information. And thank you for clarifying. Um, we obviously are not going to yeah. agree and we're going to talk about it. But the fact that you called in and said, hey, all cards on the table, here's where I'm at, and here's the best understanding, you know, or the best way I can communicate it so that we can talk about it. Um, cheers to you. That's awesome. Um, well, thanks. Yeah. So you, 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 I, the circularity, I kind of want to also put a pin in. But before we get into circularity, um, I just, I kind of want to ask you, so it sounds like you're saying that truth implies a God that without God, there is no truth. Would that be correct? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you point to something, you say that's true, therefore God, because I think it can only be true if God exists. Yeah, actually, it's, 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 it's transcendental reasoning, meaning yeah. that um, we, we, we start with a fact in question and then we reason to what is the necessary precondition for those facts. So yes, okay. I would say that all things derive necessarily from the from God. Okay. Um, so diving into kind of where the the big hit is for the transcendental argument, it sounds like you're saying that we don't have access to truth at all. Um, 
that's partially what I'm saying, but not not entirely. Um, I okay. do believe that all people have knowledge, um, so so people can know things to be true. But where, where I would deviate is that I would say that um, a, a, on the basis of someone's a non-believer's worldview, on that basis, on their own terms, they have they have destroyed their own ability to know things. Got um, it. Ooh, ooh. Can, can I say that? That's, back to you? that's where I would stand. Can, can, can I repeat, say, can yeah, I repeat go ahead. that back to you in a different way? Robin, are, are, are you? Oh uh, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Are you saying that we are accessing truth through God the same way you are, and that the reasoning we're using is something separate? But because we're using knowledge, you know, claims, and, and we're talking about truth, that we're all kind of on the God part of things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you think that's very convincing? I guess, first of all, I know there are lots of other parts of tag, but that one in particular saying, Hey, I'm right. You can only say things because I'm right. The basis before we start is because well, I'm right. Yeah. You know, do you, do you think that that part is very convincing to a non-believer? Um, I don't, I don't expect anyone to just take, I don't, I don't expect anyone to take what I'm saying and, and instantly agree. That's why we would have a conversation about that. And sure. I would explain my reasoning behind it. So no, I don't expect me just saying it. Someone just going to take it and then and then uh, you know. Can you I know, ask a question? Immediately change their change their opinion. I appreciate that, Robin, mm -hmm. and I think that that makes a lot of sense. That nobody would you know on a dime flip their belief because of that statement. But you said you're going to explain your reasoning to us as non-believers. Can we understand your reasoning? Or if we don't, if we aren't convinced by your reasoning, is that just more proof to you that we don't have access to your reasoning to begin with? I think anyone with, 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 you know, basic reasoning skills can understand what I'm saying. You don't have to agree, but I think you could understand what I'm saying. Um, what I will say is that I don't think there's, I don't think that atheism is, is rational at all, um, given their own worldview. So I, I don't think that that's the case that is rational, but um, you can understand the arguments. You know, you're on a talk show. You you listen to arguments all the time. I think you you'd have a basic you'd have a basic capacity to understand arguments, just like just like anyone else, right? So that's very. I, don't, I wouldn't see a nice problem you, with. Robin. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're um, being a lot nicer to Robin than I would be. So go ahead. No, that, that's okay. I, I'm we're 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 on our way. <laughs> okay, so Robin. Um. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, give me just a second. I'm sorry. Um, for some reason, I'm just a little foggy today. B, do you want to pick back up? Because I, <laughs> I, 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 I had a really, really important thing to go down. And I lost it. Uh, we were talking about how whether or not reasoning could be tied to agreement. And I ah. like that Robin said that you might, uh, you might follow my reasoning and still disagree because that is that is going to be important later on so when we tell you and i can predict because you know divine revelation that we are going to disagree at least you won't be able to say then it's just because you can't reason uh, it, 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 well i would it, say it that sounds... i would say that there's no rational basis to disagree even if you do disagree I, 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 and we can go into that but i, I would I, just say that i think know. i think he's assuming that we're just using divine revelation but we're not admitting it we're just lying about it would you would you say that would you say we're lying about it or would you say we don't have access to it and we no can... i see i i believe all people have access to god's revelation in one way or another do we know that we right. have so access last to week it i talked about natural uh, you have enough knowledge for your condemnation yes okay. ah so, just so... enough to get us and kicked so out. like for example well, yeah. I, I just, just, just really quickly, because I, um, I, I don't want to get too far off base here. Um, so we are, <clears throat> we're, 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 damn it! Now I lost it again. <laughs> you, you brought it up, and I reasoning I, and acceptance, agreement. Okay, keep going. <laughs> I said uh, there's no rational basis to disagree. I said, what I what? Oh. I think that was probably the only thing I added. I said that there's no rational basis to disagree, but I don't Got think it. I said anything else other than that. No worries. Okay. Uh, actually, just before that, you had stated that um, we, we, we have to get down to a minimum, right? What is required to have, you know, oh, yeah. claims, right? 
Or how, how would you describe the that? The basic Ooh. rationalization to condemn us. No, no, he, he, he said something else. Could you say that again? I mentioned, I, I called it specifically, I, I specifically said, um, uh, trans, I reason transcendentally, meaning that I, I, we start with the fact in question and then we reason to what is necessary for those things. Okay. So do you think a God is necessary for reason? Yes, metaphysically, yes. Okay, do you think a universe is necessary for reason? Um, like if there's no universe where, you know... When you say universe, you're just talking about... I'm, I, I'm, I'm talking about our understanding. Yeah. The, the universe we're in where A, a equals A... A doesn't equal not A, and A cannot be A and B at the same time, right? Where the laws of logic are in place, where we have this kind of understanding that oh. something that weighs, you know, five pounds here is going to weigh five pounds here in two minutes. You know, the, the, this consistency of of physics, right? That, I, I consider that right. to be the universe. Um, do, do you need a universe for reason to exist? Yeah, the, yeah, I mean, if you're just going to... If it's just like the laws of logic, those kind of things, I would mm -hmm. say, say that logic or I would say yes because God's thinking. So, okay, so, so, so the so, laws so, of logic would need to be in place. Okay, so what if I said I agree with you with the laws of logic and I think that that's enough? Could you convince okay, me well, why then, the next step is necessary? Yeah. Well, why are the laws of logic true? Because we have or yet to determine true? that they are not true. Sure well, I, I mean, it, it's 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 circular. That, that would be... you, you get to the problem of of induction, right? And using what you talked about, yeah, it's circular. But I think that that's a good stopping point. Why do you need more? Right, the laws of logic prove okay, the laws of so logic. Then that, right. So that will then get to that's actually slightly different. What your statement your statement is slightly different from what I, from what I said. Okay. Um, because I said that the laws of the law or God is God exists, and I know that God exists because He's revealed Himself. Um, that's different from what you said slightly, um, and it's actually I, I would call it a big distinction. But oh. before I get to that, I want to say that um, um, when when I ask this kind of a question, okay, I'm specifically asking to to get knowledge on the other person on on what they hold to be foundational, what is what is singularly the the basis for all things so would you say that that the the laws of logic are are that which is singularly ultimate meaning that they are the the, the cause and the basis of all other things we we already talked about ultimate we can't use ultimate the way you use it okay i just say do you believe that there's there's something that is think that singularly is is the basis uh, as the, the causal origin necessarily for all things um, there so, is a difference between something that we consider to be necessary to be rational, the laws of logic, and the origin of all things, right? You're lumping these things together. Yes. The laws of logic have nothing to do with the origin of the universe, as far as I can tell. They don't need to. There's no correlation there that is necessary. Well, that's that's why that's why that's why I said they're two different things. Like when, when I when I talk about God, God is the, the basis for all things. You're talking about the laws of logic. That's not the basis for all things. That's why that's why I'm asking you sure. in your worldview, what is the basis causally for all things, including rationality, including intelligibility? Yeah, I, I, I think that's a bogus question because yeah. I think that's a bogus idea. You don't need that. I think that that is you're I think you're proposing that we need that. Does my coffee maker play music? On the piano? No? Well, then it doesn't exist. There, there are different I, 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 uses for different okay. things. We are saying that if we want to talk about rationality and reason and having a productive conversation, we can agree on the laws of logic together because we both agree that those exist and move on from there because to us, that is the stopping point. To you, you add another stopping point, which is God. We haven't been convinced that God exists, so let's just use the laws of logic and move forward. For conversations around cosmology and where the universe came from, that's an entirely different conversation to have. And we can have that one, but it doesn't tie into this one at all. Not on our end. Okay. So if if there is nothing that you find to be singularly the, the causal origin, the causal basis for these things, where, where then how are they uh, unified? Uh, so, so again, I, I think you're... You, the, where, is, where does correlation right. come from? Robin, um, we didn't say that. To clarify, 
We didn't say, didn't say what? We, we, we didn't say nothing is the cause or, or, or the origin of all things. We're saying that the question itself carries a weird implication. And because of that, we can't really answer it. We can't really engage with it. I mean, if I, if, if, if we're talking about, you know, a, a necessary origin for all things, we have to agree that there needs to be a necessary origin for all things first, and then we can kind of determine what that necessary origin is. But we're not even at a point where we can engage with it. Honestly, we, we, we would need to grant a whole lot in order to get there, but we're not there yet. I, I think we need to be convinced that there needs to be a necessary origin for all things first, you know, uh, that, 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 that is the basis for all things. Right, the, the the language that you were using, we need to be convinced that 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 we need it first, and then we can move on. Yeah, well, the yeah, that, that's why that's kind of what I what I mean. If there is nothing singularly ultimate, and I, I mean, I know you guys don't like the word, but just being clear on what I mean when I say ultimate, ultimate just meaning what, what is the basis for all things. If there's nothing that is singularly that, okay, um, then then things like correlation between these things you, you're not going to have um if, if everything is let me see how to put this if everything is um you know distinct and and, and independent of each other okay then you can robin robin are you still there robin we lost you uh did you possibly hit we'll ground me? them in something else oh there you go we're uh, back you, we, we, we lost, lost you for, for a, a good second there Oh, okay. Um, all right, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, you were saying if we okay. think that everything is distinct, then and then you cut out. Oh yes. Then um then 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 there would be no basis for you to assert that there is a a grounding for their uh their correlativeness. That they are that they are uh, correlated to each other. Okay. That so there is a unity amongst them. So so I just let's put that in practice. I think that V exists. I also don't think that there's a a uh, singularly ultimate thing out there, but I know that V is different than me. I can differentiate and I can talk about correlations. Uh, I'm not relying on a singularly ultimate thing to make those just those comparisons. Uh, uh, are they actually correlated or is that or is there, is there an illusion of correlation that you've made in your mind? Does your mind correlate them or are they actually correlated? Uh, ontologically. That's ah. a good question. I like that. I would say that a lot of the correlations that we think that we see are actually in our own minds. I think that a large portion of neuroscience, especially the concept of heuristics and type one and type two thinking, would show you that a lot of the correlations that we see, a lot of the assumptions and connections that we make between things is actually just the way our brain is structured to allow us to survive better and see patterns. That doesn't mean that there are no correlations at all. We can find actual correlations by using the scientific method to determine if A impacts B in certain conditions or not. So yes and no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I I I, 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 well, I that's ask, that's... It, it sounds it sounds like you're you're mm -hmm. you're you're getting to a point where you're saying, please correct me if I'm wrong, I might be skipping ahead here. It sounds like you're implying that there's something outside of us that's that 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 you're appealing to you are stuck in your own head aren't you robin we all are no i would say that that in my world you god is that which grounds cor correlation the fact that god is a trinity right there's there's oneness and there's manyness in his person or in his not in his person in his nature i i have no and idea so because of that I, I have no idea how that's related i asked mm -hmm. you if you're stuck in your own head like do, do no do, i'm not i'm not i don't no. know Okay, so, so you so, can escape so, so, your head. Well, yes. Yeah, so, so, so when you take in sensory data, like you look at a thing, um, does it not go through your eyes and get processed by your by your brain? Yes, it does. Okay, when, when you think about things, are you using your brain? Sure. Okay, so it sounds like you're in the exact same boat as us. He has the no, God not antenna. at all, because the because. Right, because the the that which is uh, foundational in in your framework would be different from what is what it is in mine. It's all about how you account for certain things, not whether or not they exist at the moment. 
although I would say that according to your framework, you, you can't say that they do exist. I, I, so, so honestly, that's like saying, hey, you know what? You really need headlight fluid in order to you know, drive at night safely. No, you don't. Headlight fluid is not a thing. Please show me that you need this God, this, this, this singularly ultimate thing in order to to ground your beliefs because right now it's right up there with headlight fluid that's a really good that's a really good thing uh robin give us an example of something that you know that we can't know that we can go and try and verify without using a guy antenna no i didn't i didn't say you can't know certain things i believe that you know you could know things that's not an oh, issue the, the issue is how you can account for lying. knowledge well i mean we might be lying to ourselves no i didn't i didn't say that either Okay, so we can know, yeah. we don't know, why don't we know? No, I didn't, again, I didn't say you don't know. I'm saying that you can't account for knowledge given your, your framework. Okay. That's, that's, those are two different things entirely. Right, right. okay, so, so, so Robin, I think that this God concept, this singularly ultimate concept is a red herring. I think it's unnecessary. I think it's unproductive, and I think it's terribly not useful or helpful. I don't see a reason why we need this idea of a singularly ultimate thing to ground our knowledge. That idea is bunk as far as I'm concerned. And so instead of, because it sounds like you're repeating, well, you need a singularly ultimate thing. Why do we need a singularly ultimate thing? It, it, we, you responded that you can't correlate Hello? things otherwise. Hello? We just showed that we can't. Oh, can you hear us? Yeah, I can. I saw you. You just cut off for like a, a half a second. No worries. Um, we, you said, okay, well, if we don't have the singularly ultimate thing, we don't have this this ultimate thing, then we can't correlate things up, things otherwise. I'm getting excited here. Uh, we just showed you we can correlate things. Try again. Why do we need? No, I didn't say you. Thing? Look, I'm saying, I'm saying, I, I asked you if there is correlation between the particulars of the universe, mm -hmm. and you said, did so. So I'll ask you right now: did, is there is there a correlation between particulars? Are they correlated? Some and, are, some are. So, not. for example, the laws of physics. Okay. Okay. What are the physics? are the laws of physics actually correlated to the particulars that the laws of physics reference? Uh, so, actually, physics and the way we understand it is described by us, so that we can you know, better understand the world around us. Physics. Right. There are no laws outside of physics that physics is adhering to. We describe physics as the laws of physics. They're and not correlating to anything. They just are. The fact that we're able to use physics just means we're doing a really good job of describing it. <laughs> right. No, the, the laws of physics is a language of, uh, or it, it is a, um, a, a reference of correlation. There, there's correlation. When, when you, when you invoke the laws of physics, you are making statements about how things are correlated to each other. And the laws of physics themselves are representations of how the universe or how things are correlated to each other. What I'm asking you is, is there a correlation between any or all particulars that you hold to be existent in the universe? I, 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 Robin, I think you if might you need say to dumb yes it down for to me. that question. No, no, I, I think you might need to dumb it down for me. Can you help me a little bit more? What, what's, what's an example that we can engage with? Remember, I'm just some asshole on the okay, internet, Okay, so for example, right. Um, I mean, that's, <laughs> I, <laughs> that's okay. You, I mean, look, we're, we're talking about this. is okay. Um, um, the, the, if, if I have two red uh, Legos on a table. Okay. Okay. Um, those two red Legos are correlated by the, by the idea of, of Legos. So that there is a there is a um, th there is a category that they belong to. Right. Okay. That is Lego Ness. Yeah, okay. Well, the number one and two are well, they're correlated by the by the concept of numberness um, or numbers. Uh, <laughs> so 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 I have so many questions. You just opened up. So, so are you talking about like platonic, co like like it's relating to some right. some you know other realm that we can exist? Are, are you a Platonist? Uh, yeah, I, I would consider myself one, yes. Okay. Damn, okay. I I mean, that makes that's the, sense. That's based a straight on, answer. Based on the conversation we've been having, that doesn't surprise me. Okay. It so, actually clarifies quite a bit, so thank you. Yeah, okay, so so pragmatically, uh, w when we're talking about subcategories, that's something that we did. 
right? We, we, we've classified all, all life on this planet according to genus and species. We, we've been doing our best to describe things and understanding the, the group that, that we're putting them under. That's all done by us. Mm-hmm. No, but they, are, they have essential properties to themselves, right? So if, if, for example, I said that the dog has green hair, okay, okay dogness must mean something greenness must mean something and hairness must mean something sure. irrespective of what we may tie to uh, tokenize them as right well I, irrespective of, of the, the label we ascribe to those things okay but counter imagine a dog robin what kind of dog did you imagine just now what do you say what kind of dog comes into your head when i say dog describe the dog very briefly is it a uh, not nothing in, nothing in um, I mean, if I were to, to, I mean, a German Shepherd, I guess I don't, I, I don't know. Nothing cool. comes to my mind immediately, but yeah, German okay. Shepherd. Yeah. German Shepherd. I imagined a Labradoodle. Newfoundland. Clearly, there is no essential concept of dogness beyond the fact that we all have a conception of what a dog probably looks like based on the dogs that we interact with or can pull up at a moment's notice. These things that you're describing, dogness, greenness, hairness, these are things that we have pointed to and described and agreed on as a society. This is what it means to be a dog. And everybody agrees with that to an extent and then can picture dogs in their brain. If you ask, I don't know, somebody from another country what a rooster says or what a frog says, it's going to be different than ribbit, ribbit, or cockadoodle do. And that's because they have agreed simultaneously, apart from our language, that what a rooster says is something completely different. And cockadoodle do is frankly ridiculous, which it is. But our describing it is not us tapping into some platonic realm in order to get that description. I, th- I think you're. I think what you're doing is you're you're talking more about language distinction, and that's not what I'm really referring to. You're talking about different ways we might tokenize a certain, you know, object. And because people have different ways to tokenize them, then uh, that, that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm talking what's about the, what's the that there is, there is a class, there are classes of things. How do we determine the classes well, I'm of talking, things? I, the ontologically, how do you determine them? Yeah. Well, how uh, do you point at an animal and say uh, that depends is a dog? On, depends on, well, if you're if you're going to talk like biologically, there there would be a biological classification that would be specific to dogs. Okay, so that, we determine that a that dog would have and something else would not have. I agree. I agree. So we say, okay, how do we determine this is a dog? Well, here are the biological classifications that make this thing, uh, this label. That's not a platonic ideal. That's just us describing a certain set of biological factors. Right, but those things, those biological factors themselves would have to would have to uh, be correlated to in one way or another to what to each other. Well, that again, that's, that's still linguistic. Biology. Yeah, and, and that's linguistic. We're describing a set of characteristics that, that may or may not be correlated to each other or fundamental to so, the description of a dog. But we're still in the realm of science and biology. Where is this Platonic ideal coming from, and how does it correlate to that biology? That's the, that's the thing I'm telling you. you when you, when you, you keep making these language distinctions, and I'm telling you that's not what I'm talking about. You're talking okay. past me at this point. Well, I, I mean, I'm, I mean not, I'm not talking about language. L- let me try again here. When you're talking about a category, dog, we're saying that is a category that we created. We have a word, and we're talking about that category. I don't know how you can get any deeper than that. We, we, uh, v pointed out all of these, you okay, know, so this is a subset, you know, if you, if it falls within all of these, these parameters, we're going to classify it as a dog. That's something that we as people do. So I, I assume that you're, you, you would, you would believe in evolution, correct? Uh, uh yeah, sure. I presume. Yeah. Okay. Um, now bef- the, before we existed, okay. Did, did add animals, I mean, it would just follow that, that. Certain animals existed before we did, correct? That's sure. correct. Right. Okay. Now these animals, okay, they they had uh, certain characteristics, correct? Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Now this this was before we discovered them. This is before, even after we discovered, even after we um, we discovered these these animals, right? 
that we didn't we didn't fully have a, a knowledge of of their specific characteristics. The point I'm saying is that they the, each of these each of these particulars that we're talking about, they have certain characteristics. Mm-hmm. Okay, that that would that would classify them as something, right? They have Ooh. certain essential characteristics. Ooh, can, can I can I take a stab at this? Okay, are, are you saying that? Yeah. Do you think that we're saying that a chicken from ten million years ago couldn't have had feathers because we weren't around to describe it as having feathers? We hadn't invented the idea of, you know, or the descriptor of feathers yet. Is is that what you're saying? Well, that sounds like that's that, that to me. That sounds like to me. That sounds like that's what you're saying because you're you're making up like language distinctions. Oh, got it. What you're got it. Okay, so let's clarify that. We're not doing that. I think that I think that there are plenty of things about dinosaurs that were true about dinosaurs without us there to describe it. Mm-hmm. Um, when we're talking about subcategories, we're we're grouping things, sure. And there could be other ways to group those things, but we we decided on this. Um, I don't think that there's any special value outside of that, other than the descriptors that we're giving it, right? The words that we're using to describe it. I'm not saying it's dependent upon the words. I'm, you know, it, there's not some magic that happens when we say a word. We don't speak things into existence. That's not how anything works. It, instead, it's just us seeing the world around us going, hey, you know what? I'm going to call that a feather. Uh, cool. Uh, hey, so that's a feather. You know, and we're going to, you know, go from there. And And, and it's just you right. know what? I, I think I need to think about a better way to talk about this. Robin, this has been the most productive conversation with a presuppositional apologist ongoing yeah. that I've ever had. I've enjoyed myself. And I think the one thing that I want to clarify for me is that I am purely identifying your example of all of us being able to identify and correlate a word with a concept or with a a thing, right? Dog means this category of thing. The reason that it is present in all of our minds so obviously is not because of some platonic ideal, but rather because we have all talked about dogs before and agreed amongst ourselves that that thing is a dog. Now, if you were to say, hey, V, what's a flurgle burgle i would be like i don't fucking know robin what the fuck is a flurgle burgle and you would have to explain to me what it is because we have not linguistically decided upon the definition and what that correlates to so when you say we all have this tap in to a platonic ideal this correlation between a thing and what it means What I'm saying is that the reason we have that is because we've all shared a language for so long that that has become encoded. That falls apart if you try and use a word that has not been agreed upon by the society you're in. I I, I feel like I'm getting this really interesting view. Uh, Robin, (laughs) I I think I see what you're saying. And V, I see what you're saying. And I think we're talking past each other in a very specific way. And it is crazy interesting to me um people are saying was this conversation productive well let's see we learned that robin is a platonist right you believe that there's some platonic realm right if i'm holding an apple it is only an apple because it is accessing some you know perfect apple from which it is getting its appleiness it's tapping into Mm -hmm. the platonic apple right Right. Okay. That I is mean, huge. I would have, I would have phrased it that way, but I will say that I mean, there's kind okay. of an identity to it, right? It, sure. it, it kind of relates to the law of identity, I, things I, like that. But yeah. The only reason I'm bringing it up is because we learned something huge. We would not have been able to move forward in this conversation if it wasn't for that. Mm-hmm. Um, you hopefully now know uh, if you're going to take away anything from this, and it does. It feels like we're building a bridge and seeing and learning more about each other. And I don't know how many people find this interesting. But holy crap, is this interesting to me. So if you take away anything from this, it sounds, we do not think that we speak things into existence. We think that when we talk about something, we have to come to understand what it means before we talk about it. Um, But the idea of, you know what, Robin, I'm I'm not sure how best to describe it. Could you call back? I want to think this week about how best to describe it because 
I finally think I get what you think we're thinking and <laughs> I want to clarify it, but I don't know how to do that right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's fine. Um, yeah, I could, I could call in next week if, if I'm available. Sure. Cool. Sure thing. Interesting. I'm blown away. Okay, Robin. Thank All you right. So, well, um, thank you for calling in. Uh, I, 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 huh? <laughs> okay, we're getting somewhere. We're getting okay, Robin. Thank you for calling. Yeah, we hope to hear from you soon. <laughs> yeah, thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. All right, thanks, Robin. You are excited. Yes, absolutely. I'm dropping the call. Still dropping the call, and the call is dropped. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so he thinks that you know, uh, because he's a Platonist, because he thinks that everything is is related to this Platonic realm. Uh huh. That when we're talking about something, that we are Platonists as well, or are thinking in the same way, and so when we respond to him and we're talking about the way we define things, okay, he's taking us defining things and plugging that into platonism oh so th he thinks we are evoking our own ideals into existence language. yes oh and and because of that he's like why are, but things existed before uv dinosaurs <laughs> existed they had traits they didn't depend on you to talk about them okay and well we took something entirely different we were talking past him right we can get there though I well, that's very optimistic of you. We can do it, V. Uh, Everybody else, we can do it. <laughs> we got this. <laughs> if you're a pre-sup and you disagree with Robin, call in because we're getting an understanding. And if you think it's entirely wrong, then you better correct us because we want to move this forward. 